Throughout this series so far, I've introduced some common design patterns in a few places. Ones that I can remember offhand are the strategy pattern, the null object pattern, and the repository pattern. There are a few more I'd like to cover before the end of the series, and I think it'll be really handy for you to know them in the real world. One of these I will show you and then tell you to probably avoid using it, but it's still good for you to know. All right, so we're gonna jump right in with a more formal visit to the strategy pattern. I've shown you it a few times, but I've never really shown how it works or how to implement it. Before, I implemented it in the logger class without drawing much attention to it. But I think it deserves another minute of attention since it's simple to implement and gives the dev a lot of flexibility. So we'll open strategy.php, then we'll require table printer, which as a hint, it actually implements the strategy pattern if you'd like to take a peek after the series. Then we'll define a printer class. It'll have a constructor that accepts a formatter as a strategy and we'll store it to this formatter. Then we'll define print line, which will accept a line as an argument. This will return this formatter print line and we'll forward line along. Next, we'll create an HTML formatter class, which will implement a print line method with the same method signature as above, but we'll return the line, and then we're gonna return the line surrounded by h1 tags to make it seem like it's an actual HTML element. The method doesn't have to be the same name, it just wound up being that way. Finally, we'll copy and paste this class, change the name to CLI formatter, and this will simply return line with no modification. Below, we'll instantiate the table printer, with strategy and output headers. Next, we'll add a row with the HTML strategy, and then we'll call new printer. We're gonna pass in a new HTML formatter as the strategy, and then we're gonna call print line and pass in hello world. Then we'll duplicate this line and we'll swap out HTML for CLI. At the bottom, we'll echo the output from our table printer. Okay, now when we execute the script, we can see each strategy is implemented properly. I told you this one was easy. Next, we're gonna implement the singleton pattern. But after this episode, I want you to think very carefully about when you should actually use this pattern because it often becomes a nuisance rather than being helpful. You can pass a single instance around without this pattern, so don't feel like this is the only way. We'll open up singleton.php and we'll create a class named Highlander. At the top, we'll define a protected static property named instance. Then we'll define our constructor as a protected function and some people would do this explicitly as private, but the concept is that the object can't instantiate itself outside of the class. So I think this is fine. Finally, we'll make a public static function named get instance. And inside of here, we'll have a conditional that if there is no static instance set, we'll instantiate a new instance of the class and store it to static instance. At the bottom, we'll return static instance, okay? and to show you that this will indeed only ever return a single instance, we're gonna var dump Highlander get instance twice and execute the script. Here we can see that the object spits back number one both times, showing that this is indeed the same instance. If you really need a singleton, then so be it, but more often than not, it's a code smell. If you only want a single instance of something, it's usually better practice to instantiate it in something like a dependency injection container or maybe in a facade and tell it to return the same object. This way, you can rebind it later if needed. Now I can see that I've edited this in the wrong file, so let's move it back over to singleton.php. And now that you've gotten a peek at what we're doing next, now that I've accidentally given you a preview of what's up next, the final pattern I wanna cover is the observer pattern and address some of its sibling patterns quickly. The observer pattern is used to notify various observers of an object that the given object has been changed in some way. This pattern is similar to PubSub or a simpler form of event dispatching. You'd be able to use something like this on a model object if you wanna to watch to see when it has been updated, changed, etc. Let's look at how it works. In observer.php, we'll create a project class at the top. It'll have a protected property named observers that'll be set to be an empty array. We'll create a new method named observe, which will accept an observer object, and then it'll append it to the observers array. Next, we'll create its counter method, cancel observation, which will also accept an observer as an argument. It'll do an array search for that object in the observers list. If the result is not equal to false, we'll unset this observers and pass in the index. Next, we'll create a method named notify, which will take no arguments. Its purpose is to spin through all of the observers and let them know that the object has been updated by invoking a specific method. So here we'll write for each observer, and then we'll call observer update and pass in this, so we send the reference to this object. 
Finally, we'll create a new observer class underneath this one. We'll define a method named update to correspond with the notify method in the project of object, and this will accept the project as an argument. Inside, we're simply going to have it echo out, I heard this project was updated, then we'll give it a new line, and then we'll concatenate print r, pass in project, and then true to make it return inline. At the bottom, we'll instantiate a new project, write out project observe, and pass in a new observer. Then we'll say project notify. When we run the script, we can now see that our observer did indeed fire, and we can see the project object. If we add two observers, and then rerun the script, we'll see that this object was called twice, and it's the same project object for both. So everything's working perfectly. If you have an object that has to notify listening objects of certain changes, I highly recommend this pattern. You can change it up and listen on various kinds of events by executing different methods as well. So don't feel like you're locked into this exact implementation. Okay, so I think this wraps up this episode on design patterns. There are tons more out there, and if you're really into design patterns, I recommend reading the Notorious Gang of Four book on design patterns. And next episode, we're going to recap everything we've learned and say goodbye, because we've reached the end of our series.